What up nerds? My name is Leslie Smith. Welcome back to the Nerdy Narrative where today I will be doing my December monthly wrap up. I will just quickly revisit all of the things that I read during the month of December, a few brief thoughts about each one. In the description box below, I will put all of the links for written reviews, video reviews. So if you would like to have more information about each one of these books, you'll be able to find all of that information there. And without further ado, let's jump right into all the stuff that I read. Uh, first up as part of the Joan Didion nonfiction essay read along that I'm participating in that's hosted by Kate over at the Literary Apothecary. We read Joan's essay Letters from Paradise. This essay is the epitome of Joan Didion's ability to write. The way she's able to describe something as simple as a building or a location. One instance of this essay, she is looking at the USS Arizona, which is one of the ships bombed at Pearl Harbor. I just, I, I cannot do this one justice. I'm not equipped with the words to describe what she did here. I would just strongly encourage you to read this one for yourself. This is just top notch Joan in my opinion. In carrying on the tradition that I have with my friends over at the Codex Cantina, I read A Very Italian Christmas. I'm just confused. None of these stories were happy. They were all very depressing and sad. And I'm just thinking, were all of the Italian Christmas stories sad or stories that were written around Christmas time sad? Were these the best ones that the people who put this together had to choose from? Or did they only get ones that they could use for free? I don't know what the method was for choosing these stories, but I can tell you this girl will never reread that collection. I thought I was going to sit down and read the whole book cover to cover. And after three short stories, I was so depressed I had to put it down. And then I just was reading one a day. I listened to the audiobook of David Goggins' new book, Never Finished. This came out, I want to say December 6th. My husband and I listened to it on our very long drive to to go spend Christmas with our family. This was another amazing top tier read for me for David Goggins. It got me fired up and ready to roll. It was the perfect book to end the year on. Just get your inner drive kicked into gear to start off the new year with some goal setting. I just absolutely loved it. Definitely would recommend it. I love that he talked about in this one self-publishing his first book that I read by him, Can't Hurt Me. There were some very interesting aspects that he shared that I think a lot of you would enjoy hearing about as well. This month, I also finished one of the books that are in the top six quarter finalists chosen by Team Book Invasion for SPSFC. That was a space girl from Earth. This is the first book in her Kairobi trilogy. I will absolutely finish this trilogy. Even if this book doesn't make it into the top three to go forward in the competition, I loved it. But I flew through the first 20% of this book in one sitting and I was like, ooh, I'm gonna love this one. And that turned out to be true. I absolutely loved this book. It was wonderful. I cannot wait to continue the series and I can't wait to find out what the other people on my team think about this one. I also finally finished the short story collection Exhalation by Ted Chang. This collection has some amazing mind blowing stories in it. But on the other side of that coin, there are also a few stories in here that I didn't particularly care for. You know, but even with those two or three stories that I didn't care for, it's still one I would recommend to those of you who love speculative science fiction. This is my first time reading Ted Chang and what I can tell you is I will absolutely be reading more. So next on the pile here is my patron pick of the month. My patron was Evie. She chose Pew by Catherine Lacey. We buddy read this one together. This is a literary fiction novel about a small town religious community who finds someone sleeping in their church one Sunday morning. This person will not talk to them. They cannot tell their gender, their race, but they decide that this person might be sent to them from God and they're going to take care of them. These people begin to assume things about Pew. And it was really interesting to see how each person described Pew. Some saw Pew as Asian, some saw Pew as white, some saw Pew as black, some saw Pew as mixed. There were those that said, clearly you can see that Pew is female and others who were just as adamant that Pew was male. It just continues to build and progress from there. Excellent book, excellent book. 
I also read the first book in the new series by Joseph Sale, Book of the Thrice Dead. The first book in that series is Prince of the Wasteland. I just have to show off this cover every chance that I get. I love post-apocalyptic stories and this one has some interesting fantasy aspects and with that post-apocalyptic horror, this post-apocalyptic setting was brought about by setting off nuclear warheads. And I just found it interesting that, oh, I don't want to say that. That's a spoiler. Ugh. Read this book. It's little, it's little. And book two is coming out very soon. The rest of the series is all coming out this year. I just have this feeling that this series, this six part multiverse apocalypse is going to be a favorite, especially from Joseph So, which I have read multiple books of, including this next one, Virtue's End. This one took me a while. This is a 400 plus page epic poem. It's a continuation of Spencer's something to do with the Fae Queen, the Fairy Queen. The full title of that poem has completely left me. It is currently the longest poem ever written. I think I would understand this one more if I knew what that one was about. But if I can find the Cliff's Notes to read where I can get an understanding of it. And then I also want to reread Romantic Outlaws, which is the nonfiction biography of Mary Shelley and her mother. And then following that, I want to read Frankenstein. I want to come back and reread this one because I think all of those combined is going to increase my reading enjoyment of this one or at least help me understand it better. And none of that probably makes any sense to you because I didn't bother to tell you that Edmund Spencer and Mary Shelley are both characters in this adventure and so that's why I think it would enrich the reading process. In November, my patron pick of the month was Daughter of the Moon Goddess by Sula and Tan, which I absolutely loved and adored. My buddy read that one with my friend Gail, and we decided to continue in December with Heart of the Sun Warrior. I think Daughter of the Moon Goddess should have been a standalone. That one was perfect. It wrapped up perfectly. We could have left that, never had this one. I would have been happy. There was something different about this one, something that some piece of magic that was missing that was in the first book and I can't quite put my finger on what that was. Maybe it was because it was less action, a different tone, but I love the ending. So she did have me by the end. Next, I read A Prelude to Ashes by Tiago Abdallah and immediately followed it with A Touch of Light. If you haven't read this series, but it's on your TBR, even though the chronological order is Prelude to Ashes followed by A Touch of Light, save this one for after you read A Touch of Light. This one has some good information as far as timeline, but I think it would have hit different if I had spent all the time with the characters here first. I think this one would have made me feel a little squishy on the inside, a little more endearing. What it did do was hook me for the series because as soon as I finished it, I went right into this one. Now this one, I did get to immerse and read because Tiago Abdallah provided me with a copy of the audiobook and Kevin Kemp, the narrator, is amazing. You know, if I was gonna rate this one based on the narration alone, five stars all the way. I wasn't even maybe a quarter of the way in and I messaged the author and I was like, look, if you don't get Kevin Kemp for this entire series, I'm going to show up at your house. <laughs> Fortunately for me, I will not be booking any travel because the author assured me that he had Kevin Kemp on lock for the entire series. The second book in the series is coming out later this month. I will be securing a physical copy as well as the audiobook to continue the series. I am so excited. This is the rare book that you're gonna hear me say, I love the idea, the themes. Normally for me, I'm a character driven reader. I need a character to latch onto to either love or love to hate. And while I did enjoy the three characters whose points of view that we got here, it was the themes, religion, faith, belief, death, the culture and belief system of these three different characters, how they view death. It was just so good. You know, and that's not even getting into the sentinels with these griffins. They have this bond that they form with them. Like, how do you get to be chosen as a sentinel? And how does this bond form? I want to know more about this process. And since book two, A Shade of Madness, has a big griffin on the front of it, I'm hoping I get that. Next here on my pile is a literary thriller called The Violin Conspiracy by Brandon Slocum. 
This one might be familiar to you because it was part of the Goodreads Choice Awards. It was nominated for Best Debut and Best New Mystery Thriller. I would agree it deserved the Debut Novel nomination. The mystery Thriller, maybe not so much because while it is a literary thriller, the literary parts of it far outweighed the thriller parts. While I was intrigued by the thriller and it was always at the back of my mind as to who done it, who stole this $10 million Shadvarius violin, I was completely caught up in the story of Ray McMillan learning about him, his family, especially Grandma Nora. This book made me realize I have grandma envy. I met some really good grandmas in the books that I read last year and when I read about Grandma Nora, I realized you have grandma envy, girl. And then the final book that I read in the month of December is Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. This is a reread of the series, but my first time reading the illustrated versions and the illustrated versions are the way to go. Let me know in the comments down below what your favorite read was from December if you're able to choose one or let me know if you're like me. You can't choose. You had too many good books. That's gonna do it for me today. Thank you all so so much for being here. It means so much to me. If you enjoyed watching this video today please consider hitting the like button. If you would like to see more like it please consider hitting the subscribe button before you go. Have a fantastic rest of your day and I'll catch you in the next one.